if you want to change Days Gone from looking like this to this, then stick around. How's it guys and welcome back to the channel and to another guide. This time it's for Days Gone and I've been getting a lot of requests to uh, do this. I thought modding this game would be a little bit easier than the others that are a little bit more complicated but uh, but I guess some people still need help and I'm happy to oblige. So for this uh, guide I'm going to be using my showcase which is this one right here. The link is in the description below. So I'm going to be modding this game according to my showcase but not to worry the lessons that you will learn in this guide will help you mod your game with whatever mod you want to use. So you will get an all-round understanding of what to do and where to place things. I will be going nice and slow, especially for those that are new to modding and new to modding this game in particular. All mod links will be provided in the video description below. So let's get started. So the mods that you will need is this one which is the, not the reshade, the NAR, NAR, um, performance visuals and stutter fix. Next will be the Darker Knights mod, the Better Camera mod, the Daddle Dixon mod, the Massive Challenging Hordes mod, Explosive Gore mod, Better Flashlight and Remove Hit Markers mod, as well as reshade. So to get started, let's download the NAR mod. So there are many options for you to choose. Choose any one that you actually want, and especially if you've got a slower computer. You know, here's the potato version, which is obviously they reduce a lot of the uh, render distance and optimize for low PCs. I think in my showcase, which was uh, some time ago, it was actually this one, the experimental one. And the experimental one, I think, had a much higher... Uh, amount of guard rays and things like that but we're going to use this latest one since, since I think most people are going to want to use the final patch version of this mod so let's just take this one but also there's no reason not to use this one over here the experimental mod so let's just download this once that's downloaded we'll go to the darker nights and what we'll download is this version, the main file, right? Darker Nights uh, version 2.2. And the optional file that I add is the Days Gone AI Flashlight Reduction version one, the stock one over here. So not this one, but you can download both and then see which one you like best, right? So, but uh, I prefer this one. And we'll get into what uh, percentage I chose. The Better Camera mod only has one file, so just download that. The Daryl Dixon mod, we're going to use the main file, but there's also this file. This is an optional file. So you get the Daryl Dixon head, but in case you want to use uh, another mod with NPC clothing, then you should use this file. That's just, think of this as just the face, and then you can, it's still compatible with your NPC um, clothing mod. But also you have to just make sure that it is most NPC, like it says here, most NPC outfits are compatible, but uh, there might be new um, outfits out there that might not be. So just read the description of the mod that you're going to download, but we'll do this main file. And for the Massive Hordes mod, we are going to always choose the pack version. So you'll normally have uh, two options sometimes, right? So there's the Horde 1.2 and 1.2 pack version. We are going to take this version. So you can either take this one or these optional ones, right? So if you see here, there's 330 everywhere, 330 everywhere, pack version. Is 500 so these are just the different levels that's like the main one that he uh, chose where um, there are different ward sizes but we are going to go for the full enchilada we're going for the 99.9 ward everywhere pack version so every ward is always going to be to the max and we're going to choose the pack version but if you want the game to be a little bit more slightly towards the original where even the smallest version of this main file is still bigger than the vanilla version. But you know, uh, as you play through the game, the hordes will get bigger and bigger with this. As I said before, every horde is 999. So we're gonna take this one. With the Explosive Gore mod, we are going to take Explosive Gore. We are not going to take Life Without Limbs. Since this one, when you shoot off a limb, the NPC players are still running around and the enemies are still running around. So if they're holding a gun and you shoot off their uh, uh, gun arm, like their right arm, 
they're still holding it because the game doesn't know that uh, uh, you modded it in that way, you know? So, and if you shoot their heads off, they still run around because you still need to shoot the enemy maybe two more times or something like that. So we're just going to take this one where, where the vanilla game will handle the dismemberment and not the mod. But this will just give us more gore. So we'll take this top one over here. And then we'll take the better flashlight. Since with the darker nights, it's much darker. There's still a choice that you can still make with, within that mod. But this one will just brighten everything up. The vanilla flashlight just doesn't do it for me anyway. So there is only just one file. And we'll take this one, right? See, the P over there stands for pack. All right. And then remove hit markers. It's also just one file. It's this one over here. Remove hit markers. And last but not least, let's just download the latest version of Reshade. Just click on the button. We'll take it to the bottom of the page. And the latest version is 5.9.2. So once everything is downloaded, what we're going to do is start with the NAR mod. Okay. So for the instructions, it's actually in post over here. And you can read over here what it says about uh, the mod and things like that, right? But there is only one issue that uh, people might uh, get around. So you see here where it says app data local, right? So to get to this, this is where we're going to put our mod into, right? So we'll hit on the start button and we'll just start typing immediately. So we'll put in a percentage and we'll put local app data and percentage again and we'll just hit enter and then you should see a window pop up right so this is a hidden folder within your c drive and we are going to go now we can just follow what he says here so we'll go to bend game saved config so we go to bend game saved and we're going to config and you'll see windows no editor and it's all within here that you have to uh, replace some of these files, right? Since, let's just um, close this so we can actually see the mod itself. Okay, here's all our mods that we downloaded. And here's the, it's not the game install folder, it's your local app folder. So it's another section of your installed game. So we go to uh, the NAR mod, you'll see the config and window editor and here's all these files that are actually going to be replacing these ones over here so before you do that right click make a new folder and call it originals in case anything goes wrong then you can just replace these modded files in case it breaks your comp uh, your game or something like that so we're going to take the engine we're going to take the game game user settings light mass and scalability so we'll just right click copy and put that in this folder okay once that's done we can just select all and click and drag over and replace all the files yes okay so now you actually got the the norm mod installed on your game and you can go ahead and play it we're going to do that now but before you do that Game user settings needs to remain the same the way it is like this. Read only, hidden is not checked, but everything else needs to be checked like this where it says read only. So make sure each of the new modded files, the INI files that you just copied over, is read only. It should be, but this is just to make doubly sure. Like that. The reason why you don't put game user settings as uh, read only because this is where the game within the game you change your resolutions and things like that and once you do that it changes this file with within your uh, computer so if you make it read only then your game will change its resolution by the neck but when you close your game and you open it up again it reverts back to the old settings now that that's installed let's launch the game Okay, once the game has launched and everything seems to be running fine, the next thing you're going to have to do is go into the options menu. And we're going to have to change a few things. Because when we copied over this modder's files, and especially that game settings file, we've copied over his settings as well. So, unless you're Spanish, since the mod is Spanish, you won't be able to hear any of the game vocals. And the only sounds you'll hear is the background sounds as well as the music. 
so we're gonna have to change that as well as the graphics and things like that so if you if you he was playing with a mixture of medium and high settings so i changed everything back to my settings that i wanted in display the model was playing with 2k 60 hertz so i changed that to 4k 120 hertz and the next thing we're gonna have to change is the language so this is the main thing so change this back to english and just to be uh, extra sure change this thing to another language and then change it back over here change this and change it back and if you're playing with subtitles you can turn it on again that's just to make sure that the game actually um, saves our settings and especially uh, this dialogue text and uh, subtitle text the next thing is the controller the model was using a 360 controller so he set it to 360 i don't know why he didn't just set it to automatic but we're going to change it to automatic since with the 360, all the prompts are in the 360, uh, you know, saying uh, click A to do something, even though you're playing with a mouse and keyboard. So this is especially for those that's playing with a mouse and keyboard. Now you will actually see your key prompts display correctly. Once all that is set, we can actually just uh, close this and we can continue modding. Okay, we launched the game and the game is running. So you, you should do this for every mod that you install so that in case something breaks, then you know what mod done this. The next mod is Darker Nights. So here is where you're going to get your first real choice of what you want. So if we go into Darker Nights, we'll go into this one. And then it says here, like these, there's nothing really in here in these uh, text files here. He's just trying to explain what you have to do. So you have to choose Stock or uh, Dark Sky only choose one right at this moment and if you want to have a look before you do that on the mod page you will see uh he's got pictures of here right so if you go through the pictures it'll show you here here's the stock night and the 70 percent 50 percent 30 10 percent that's how dark it's getting and then we also have the moonlight at 100 percent 80 percent and so on so go through these and then actually see which one you like more or just do the painful thing as of what I done. I went through every one of them to actually see which one I like more. And because I modded this game so long ago, I don't really remember what I chose, but I think I remember I chose the dark sky instead of the st stock sky, as you can see here. See that stock and that's a darker sky since it's night, I want it darker. And then when it comes to, so he's even got um, sections like this dark sky, moon 40, exposure 40, right? So let's just go for that one for this example, but it's your choice. So we'll go for the dark sky and the moon was 40, I think. And now we choose the exposure level. So this guy's done 90% of the work for you. So, and we'll take this one. So we'll say, copy this. Again, we're going to go into this local app data uh, folder and bend game. And we'll go to saved and this time we're going to put it in the packs folder so if you got a clean install of days gone which you should have if you're going to start modding you won't have a packs folder so we'll just right click and go to create a new folder and we'll put in packs we'll create this folder capital p please hit enter go into this and we'll paste that file in here so we'll paste that in what we also want to do we want to go into the games install directory. For me, the game install directory is my D drive and then games installed and days gone. So this is what you're probably used to seeing, right? So let's just make this a little bit smaller like that. So you can see Actually, like that. I think that's a little bit better. Okay. So we want to go into bin game content. And then you'll see here a SF packs folder. This we're going to rename. Do not delete, just rename. Because these are the mods work on this game. Since this needs to get changed. So we'll just change this to underscore back or original or you can rename it to whatever. You can even take the this word, this name out. But it's better to just keep it in so you know that's the original name. So now that we've renamed that, this Darker Nights mod should work. So what you should do now is launch the game and make sure everything is running. I won't do that since I know everything is running on my PC. The next mod is the optional flashlight reduction. 
the reason why I've put this mod in is that the game, especially with um, the NAR mod, that the flashlights and especially coming out of tunnels is very, very bright and every you can't see in front of you. So we're going to have to reduce the, the flashlight brightness. So let's go to the mod. Here's the flashlight uh, brightness. And here's the 40%, 60%, 80%. Use only one of these. And once again, we're going to put it in the packs folder that we just created. So first, let's just take the 60% copy you again will have to go through the game and just make sure that you want the 60 percent or 40 or 80 and we'll just paste it in over here and we don't have to change the specs uh folder anymore since we've done that so all mods that use the pack file we can just now just pop it over into this folder and it should work that's if it's compatible with any other mod that you might have the next mod is the better camera mod so we'll go to that one and there's three pack files we'll copy them all and we'll paste it into the pack folder, just like that. After that's copied over, we are going to go back into the SF packs underscore back folder and look for startup packages. It should be right at the bottom, like over here. And we're just going to rename this. The way you can rename it, just right click and say rename. And then after startup packages, we are just going to Type in this underscore M-O-D-S for mods and E-N-A-B-L-E-D enabled. So mods enabled dot back. And we'll just uh, click away so that uh, so that we can rename this file. Now that that's done, we'll go on to the next mod. The next mod is better flashlight. So all we have to do is go to the mod uh, zip and we're just going to copy this and paste it in our packs folder. And that's installed. Now with the Daddle Dixon mod, we are going to copy this pack file, not in your packs folder that you created, but in the game install directory. We still in the specs uh, underscore back folder. We'll go back one. Actually just go to the game install directory over here. You go into bend game, then you go to content. That's the folder we renamed, but this time we're gonna go into packs over here, and we're just gonna click and drag this file over. And there we go, the mod has been installed. You can go ahead and launch the game and check it out for yourself. The next mod is the Massive Hordes mod. Now keeping in mind also that the more zombies you have on screen, the stronger your PC will need to be. So the 999 mod that I'm going to install you will most likely need a stronger PC. But with that being said, let's go to the 999 Horde mod, the pack version. And we'll go into the folder and we'll just click and drag this over into your packs folder that you created. And now the mod has been installed. What's also advisable with this mod is to start a new game. Well, that's what the modder says. I've run this on old saves and it seems to work, but if, if you're having any issues, the game will run, but uh, your horde size might just default to the vanilla size that the game set it as. The next mod is the Explosive Gore mod. So we'll go into that zip and once again, copy it, paste it into your packs folder that you created, and now the mod has been installed. And the final mod from Nexus Mods is the Remove Hit Markers mod. So we go into that zip and we're just going to copy this pack file once again you guessed it into your pack folder that you created click paste so now that all the mods from nexus mods has been installed let's run the game and just make sure that everything is fine well i'm in the game and everything seems to be running fine uh in years old daddle dixon daddle do you like the mods no do you like my channel no? Well, you can't please everyone. Um, so the next thing is to exit the game and let's put some ray tracing on this. So for my reshade preset, what we're going to need to do is install reshade. So find your reshade setup that you've uh, downloaded. I've always kept all of mine since some games work better with other versions of reshade. But let's just go for 5.9.2 since this is a recent game. And you can either wait for Days Gone to kind of um, pop up here, or you can just go to Browse, and we'll go to the Games Installed, Days Gone, 
Bend Game, Binaries, Win64, and we'll just go to daysgone.exe and we click Open and we'll click Next. Then we'll choose DirectX 10, 11, 12, click Next. This will be empty, leave it like that, click Next. Then we'll just uncheck all and check all since we want everything over here, since you don't know all of the effects that I have. And I forgot all the effects that I've installed on my preset. So we'll click Next for that and wait for everything to download. And don't forget, I've got a ray trace preset as well as a non ray trace preset. For those that don't want Pascal Gilcher's ray tracing preset or don't want to pay for it, there's also a non ray traced version for you. And it's all free on my Discord. There we go, Reshade has been successfully installed. We'll click Finish. The next thing you want to do is also download my preset, right? So we'll go to my Discord. And in my Discord, you'll find this download section over here. And in here, you'll just have to scroll up. This is a little bit further up. Here we go. Here's it. So we'll just download the zip. Continue with the download. Okay, open up the zip. And within that, you'll find a non-ray traced uh, preset and a ray traced preset. So we're going to take the ray tracing preset for now. We'll just copy this. We'll go to the game install folder, which will be over here. Games installed. Days gone. Bend game. Binaries. Win64. And you'll see new um, folders uh, be created from reshade. Right? So reshade dash shaders. So where you see the daysgone.exe, we'll just paste my preset in here, like that. And then we also have to install the ray tracing shader from Pascal. So you're going to have to go to his Discord. I'm not affiliated with him or anything. I just like the um, shader. But of course, it's not free. It's $5. But what I, what I do, or I'll tell people always, is just get the $5 and they get all the different versions of the shader. And then just unsub from his Patreon. And then you will have all the different versions to use for any game you want for the rest of your life. So while we're in the games install folder, let's get that shader. We'll go in here and we'll go to 0.36.1. There are newer versions than this, but this is the one that I like the best. We'll go into that uh, zip and we're just going to copy this two folders. And we're going to go into our reshade dash shaders folder and you'll see the same two folders. We'll just right click anywhere and click paste. And if it says replace something, you say yes. Once that's done, what we also want to install is the motion vector file. That helps with the reshade uh, with the RTGI. It's just a performance file, right? So you get more performance from your ray tracing for no downside. That is also on Pascal's uh, Discord, you're really going to have to scroll all the way up or just search his download section for this file. And the file in question is this one here, the Motion Estimation Shader. There is an Optical Flow version. I don't like this. I don't think it works at all. So we're just going to go into this one and you'll see this is the file that you'll actually download. It's quite a long name set of numbers. If you go into that, go into that, you'll see the Quint Motion Vectors. So we'll just copy that. And you'll see there that's an FX file, right? So the FX files are in shaders over here. This is where all the FX files are. So we'll just paste it in here. Paste. And that's it for the ray tracing. So we can go into game now. Once the game starts up, you will see on the top of your screen the reshade actually loading. If you don't see that, then you've obviously installed reshade incorrectly. Perhaps you've uh, chosen the wrong uh, DirectX version. But this is what you should see. And if you click Home, on your keyboard, the home key, you'll come here over here and you'll say skip tutorial because you don't really need that. We'll click home again just to deactivate the red menu because whenever you're busy with ray tracing or any other thing really with reshade, you want to be in game and not within the menu of the game. And if you see this over here, compiling effects, don't worry, uh, wait till that's all ready. So we'll go to continue game. Okay, once we're in game, especially when you're dealing with ray tracing, we need to find the depth of the game, right? So what we're going to do firstly is we are going to open up Reshade and we're going to type in over here. Let's just move this over here so you can see a little bit better. 
I'm going to type in DIS or for display or the full name. What we want is this one here, display depth. So when you look at it, that's not correct. This should be like gray, right? So if you go to my Discord, when you download the file, I always give uh, the settings as well, right? So it says the upside down depth buffer is no and the reverse depth is yes. So that's actually should be one and that should be zero as well, right? So this is just reversed and we want to uh, set it to one. So we'll go over here to this edit global processor definitions, click on it and you'll see there that upside down one is zero. This logarithmic one is zero. That's also zero and we want to change that to one. And then enter doesn't work. You have to just click away from it to activate it, right? So we'll click away and we wait for it to load up again. Ah, then it's looking like this. That's what it should look like, right? So from that, let's just find out uh, display depth again and we can deactivate this. At least we know now that the display depth is working. So now all we have to do, this little uh, bar over here, reshade presets and go to my uh, preset or any preset that you have downloaded on the internet. And for the non-ray tracing preset that I have, you guys don't have to worry about the display depth. So you can just hop to this part of the step of just activating your preset that you want. But if you do have the ray tracing preset or, or using that one, then you have to do the display depth first and we'll click on this and we click select. And there you go. The ray tracing is now active and the preset is now active. Um, I see Daryl still giving me the cold shoulder. Well, so this comes to the end of the guide. Uh, hopefully this guide has helped you uh, with a better understanding of how to mod uh, Days Gone. And you can use this to mod Days Gone the way you want to mod it. Now all that's left is for you to go and get some zombies. Or freakers. <laughs> Anyway, for those that lasted till the end, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to give this video a like. And if this video has helped even one person, it's worth it. Anyway guys, see you later. Cheers, happy modding, bye bye.